Hello, Lucky Cats. Lucky Kill back with Love on the Peacock Express. New game. Um, we just did Clara. How about Riley? The introduction will be exactly the same. No think service mail when I see one. Not enough to make everything match, I guess. My lips purse, and I think I might have struck a nerve. My sartorial inclinations aside, how much did that really tell you? This one. I don't know what drew me to this woman. Maybe it was the salt and pepper hair or the Han Solo vibe. Or the scar on her lip. Or the leather jacket. I point to the ticket. This one? The conductor smiles at me. I wonder if she finds something funny. I see. Very well. Thank you for your patience as we get everyone aboard. I hope you enjoy your trip. She ushers me along with the cold courtesy of a real professional, and I find myself inside. Oh, these are all the endings I can get. Neat. I didn't realize a chill was settling into me until I got further inside the train, and I relax in the warmth. As I walk into the train car, I take a deep breath to take in the smells of dust and clean upholstery. On the far side of the cabin is the woman from the line with the clean cropped hair and jeans. She's, look, she's looking through the window, but turns from it to look at me as I enter. The way she smiles at me, like, seems like it's out of a movie. There's a pause, and it grows across her face like a realization. She hasn't even said anything, and I know I'm blushing already. She's so powerful. Hey there. Hey. Nice to meet you. She smiles a little brighter. Looks like we'll be locked in this little room together for a while. Why don't you come in and take a load off? I won't bite, unless you want me to. This is going to be quite the journey. She moves past me to the entryway to give me space, and I drop my luggage onto my bed. When I sit down in it, I see that she hasn't stopped looking at me. I'm Victoria Rook. But please, call me Vic. Victoria Rook just doesn't sound as good. I'm Riley. I hold out my hand to shake hers. But instead, she bends over to kiss my fingers. Oh, wow. The pleasure is mine. I'm glad you showed up. I was afraid I would have to go this whole journey alone. Some good company can make all the difference. Let's get to know each other better. What do you do? While Vic looks cool and rugged, she's very friendly. It's difficult to keep from smiling back at her. Almost as difficult as it is to keep myself from blushing. I'm a private investigator. For a moment, Vic's demeanor shifts. I've surprised her with that so much that it takes her a moment to wipe the expression off of her face. If I hadn't been trained for this sort of thing, I might have also missed the suspicion that passes over her before she relaxes back into a smile. Like in the movies. She keeps talking like I didn't catch her off guard for a few seconds of awkward silence. Should I bring it up? Yes. No. Probably not. I'm gonna. You look surprised for a moment there. Are you alright? Oh yeah, sorry. Just gas. 
Vic's smile is back in place now. Whatever she wants hidden remains that way. So where are you headed, Miss Detective? Nowhere in particular. I'm on vacation, so I thought I'd travel around. Take a train for the scenic route. That's a good idea. Take a vintage of your youth while you can. I guess that means you have no commitments tying you down. She winks at me for that one. Maybe she's just doing it to make me blush, but I'm going to just pretend it isn't happening. Well, not really. I travel a lot around a lot for jobs, so other than that and my sister, I don't have any commitments, no significant other if that's what you're asking. No boyfriend? N no! Girlfriend? Not yet. Vic smiles, wise and all-knowing about the meaning in my tone. She's been reading me like a, like a book this whole time and telling me nothing about herself. What about you? What about me? Where are you going? What do you do? Do you have a partner? I'll tell you what I have. I have a ticket with my name on it for a long train ride, ride with a beautiful woman. I can't let her get out of this. So do I. Vink's eyes light up like I just picked up a racket to her favorite sport. You're not going to bore me by letting me just talk about myself the whole time, will you? I know all about me already. Vic laughs. Fair enough. I'm heading home from a trade show. I run a motorcycle repair shop there, so I gotta get out and schmooze with the corporates here and there. I prefer classic bikes, but sometimes you can get to know people who are where to find, who know where to find older parts that haven't been in production in a while. Wow. She does seem like the type of woman who would ride a motorcycle. I'm not sure she could be much cooler if she tried, but she keeps raising the bar. Do you ride? No, but I always wanted to try. It's the best. You should get someone to teach you. Anyway, Vic leans against the window and fidgets her fingers. I wonder if she's a smoker. I've got a daughter back home, Maggie. She's turning 18 this year. This comes to me as a surprise. She seems like a rugged, independent woman. According to Vic's expression, my reaction on my face is obvious. I know what you're thinking. That Vic seems like a drifter. The love of men leave him type, right? There wasn't any marriage, no romance to me. One day it was just me, and then it was me and her. Sometimes in life, thing, these things just happen. I wouldn't judge anyone for doing it different, but slowing down with her was the best decision I ever made. There's a sentimental distance in her gaze and a warmth in her tone. I can, I can tell you really love her. Vic smiles, but she also seems embarrassed. Yeah. I do. I miss her when I take these trips, so I appreciate the company. You mentioned you had a sister? Are you close? I think so, although our relationship is a little unusual. Our folks weren't around, so I did my best to take care of her on my own. So you got to be her honorary mom? Well, I tried my best. I'm not sure how much responsibility I can take for her growing up, but... She's great. I bet she is. Raising someone is a learning experience for you as much as it is for them. Eventually, you have to let go and just hope you made the right decisions and believe in them to be their own person. Maggie's off to college soon, so I'll have to keep telling myself that. Vic laughs, but I understand her uncertainty. When is she going to study? She hasn't decided yet, but I've been trying to suggest she go into engineering. Maggie's learned a lot from me about bikes and engines, but she's a smart cookie. I'm sure she'll do whatever she wants to go. The warmth in her voice when talking about her daughter is contagious. She smiles at me. Sorry for getting all sentimental on you after we just met. I don't mind. I'm just happy you opened up to me. You're a real gumshoe. You know just how to get what you want. Consider me charmed. But now that you've solved the case, 
can you get the dame? While I'm busy being flustered, Vic gets up and opens the door to the train car to go. I'll be right back. With that, she got, she's gone, leaving me alone in the train car. I stare out of the window and watch as the countryside rolls past. I can't remember if I saw grease on Vic's fingers or under her nails. When she passed me earlier, I was, she smelled lightly of tobacco and the countryside, with none of the tang of metal. Is she telling me the truth? No. I'm a complete stranger on a train that she may never see again. Vic doesn't owe me the truth, but I'm an investigator, and it's hard to shake when I know things aren't being kept. When I know things are being kept from me, I'll be more careful around her. <coughs> <coughs> I lay back in the bed and watch the clouds go by through the window. Now and then, a power line or tree cuts across the panorama. Par just as I start to wonder after Vic she returns I see her expression shift into easy, an easy going smile when she catches my eye hey there did you miss me I was starting to wonder if you got lost Vic laughs once and nearly loses her smile into a grimace I nearly did you wouldn't think it easy to get lost on a vehicle that's a straight line. Anyway, where are we? Where were we? I think you were telling me about your sister. Sure, she just graduated from high school, so she's around the same age as your daughter. I talk about my sister a bit, sharing information of value while I watch Vic. She looks at the bed as if she considers sitting, but she doesn't. Instead, she leans against the wall of the cabin. She's really into programming computers. I don't understand it, but I'm glad she's found something that makes her happy. I had to get her to make me an email account. When I stop talking, Vic doesn't notice right away. She simply rests there, her eyes closed, and a telltale pinch between her eyebrows. I count the seconds off my fingers to see how long it takes her until I run out of hands and feet. Vic? Yes? She says it so sweetly as if there was nothing that I caught her doing. Are you, are you alright? You look like you're in pain. Not at all, just tired. I stare at her and she smiles back at me. She's sticking to her guns, so I let the quiet sit for a while until she looks away with a laugh. So, Miss Gumshoe, tell me the truth. Are you working on an assignment on this train? No. Vic nods. Question number two. If you discovered evidence of a crime, would you feel obligated to report it to the uh, authorities? Yes. Vic gives me a cool stare. So, you're the lawful type, huh? In normal circumstances, our working relationship would end here, but I need your help. Can I hire you? Will you keep a job between the two of us? I steady myself against her cold words. Of course. What do you need me to do? I'm trusting you with this, understand? I'm taking a gamble here, so don't blow it. With a hiss and wince, Vic lifts the hem of her shirt. The spotting that has leaked into the bandage around her torso tells me all I need to know. To know. She cleaned it like a professional, but the blood still looks fresh. Vic, how are you standing? You must be in so much pain. Are you worried about me? That's so sweet. These things happen sometimes when you go to automobile conferences. Vic lets out a strained laugh. As long as you're helping me out, helping me out I owe you the truth. I wasn't lying to you when I said that I run a motorcycle shop. There's just more to it than that. The real money comes from my other job. My real job. I'm a professional thief. Oh. Vic chuckles quiet and grim. Yeah, that's the reaction I usually get. So what now? Do you regret getting grabbed up with me? Nah. My job is to find information, not to pass judgment. 
I have lines that I might draw, but this isn't one of them. Vex smiles at me. Thanks. Anyway, I'm not coming back from a conference. I'm on this train to do a job, as you might have guessed. I was hired to fetch a certain item for a client. A certain item? I suppose you can't tell me what it is. I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. We stared at each other. It's hard to take her seriously when she says stuff like that. Sorry, I know it's low hang it was low-hanging fruit, but I had to make that joke. I, s <coughs> I sigh at her, and she gives me a sheepish smile before continuing. When I left the car a little while ago, I went to do the handoff. Usually these things are casual, so you don't raise su any suspicion. Just a couple of random folks in their civvies, shaking hands, making a trade. But this time I got there, and there was a little girl wearing a mask. Before I had a chance to ask questions, she fucking stabs me and takes off with the goods. So your job is going to be to find that girl in the mask. We have to get to her before that train stops. And she and my job well job well done are gone for good. She's probably just a kid in over her head, spooked because she doesn't know what she's doing. I used to be that girl, too. Vic sighs and touches her stomach with a wince. I feel like I can almost see her for who she really is. Someone scrappy, desperate, and tired. All right. Before I get started, I have to... I have a few questions. Yeah, I bet you do. Where did this happen? Where exactly did this encounter happen? I was supposed to meet with the contact in the cab in a cabin at the end of this car. The girl in the mask was there instead, and that's when she stabbed me and took the stuff. I wonder if my contact was jumped somewhere too. This seems fishy. Do you know anything about your contact? Of course not. This is that isn't how this works. But like I said, it's usually some dude in jeans and a t-shirt, not a tiny girl in a creepy mask. Can you tell me more about the girl who attacked you? Not really. There wasn't a lot of time to take in what was happening. She was short, petite, wearing a hoodie and a creepy bird mask. Did she say anything? Not at all. Not a sound. She just knifed me, checked my pockets, and made a run for it. Can you tell me anything about your employer? Not a lot. I often operate without much information about a person or their situation. They usually tell me just enough to get the job done. But I do have this. Vic hands me a business card. I look it over. He's a stockbroker? Vic shrugs. Maybe. I don't get paid to know why people want something or what it's for. I can't say I don't get curious, though. You've never met the guy? Nope. But that's normal. We just talked on the phone. After the exchange, I was gonna going to burn the card and forget this ever happened. We never intended to speak again. Do these uh, complications usually happen in this line of work? Well, yeah. It wouldn't be fun if there wasn't a little danger. I bet your job gets a gets a gets a sketchy sometimes too, right? Doesn't it make things more exciting? I have to think about it. I guess you're right, depending on what kind of danger there is. As long as no one's getting hurt, it can be pretty fun. I knew you were the type. Tell me about the item. Vic shakes her head. Sorry, sorry, Gumshoe, no can do. I have a reputation to keep and a paycheck to earn. Maybe later I'll tell you. But the drop-off has been compromised, so I'm still on the clock. A lady has to keep a few secrets. That is all. Off you go, then. Earn that shoe, gum gum shoe. I wish I could come with you, but I think I need to lay down. I think you should. 
I'll be back soon. Hey. Vic lowers herself onto the bed and smiles up at me. Thanks. I smile back at her. Take it easy and leave it to me. Come show Riley is on the case. I use my utmost uh, confident walk to stride out of the train car and continue the investigation. It's not very often a case puts my life in potential danger. I'll have to be careful so I don't end up like Vic or worse. Maybe she's right though. The danger does make it exciting. <coughs> I've got a lot of ground to cover here, so let's check the hallway first. The conductor keeps this place so tidy it should to make my job easier. Huh? I pick up the business card and it's so familiar that I reach for the one in my pocket to make sure I didn't drop it. Sure enough, the card is identical to the one that Vic gave me. The name and the phone number are the same for the same stockbroker. This raises more questions than it gives answers. I better not jump to unfounded conclusions. That was easy. The knife is still open, so I pick it up carefully by the handle. A red sheen lingers on the blade turning a rusty color by the time it reaches the hilt. It must have been wiped clean quickly, but the presence of blood is still unmistakable. Good thing the blade is short. Vic could have really been hurt. She left incriminating evidence, but I still don't know who the masked girl is or what direction she went. I guess my only option is to hit the dirt and check the other cars until I find another clue. She couldn't have gotten far. The handsome gray fox from earlier isn't happy about me intruding on her space. She lets, she lets me snoop around with a clear impatience. There's so no sign of the masked girl in the small car. The lady hasn't heard anything either, so I move it on. The next car has a beautiful, glamorous woman that, that I think I also saw in the line. Her room is cluttered with personal stuff. She's kind of about my intrusion, but she asks a lot of questions about what I'm up to. As soon as I'm sure she's not hiding the mess girl, I slip out. I don't want to be rude, but I can't tell her a client's personal business. I knock on the door to the next car, but no one answers. And, well, I didn't get to be good at my job by minding my own business. I try the door. It's open, so I let myself inside. I guess it wasn't empty, after all. I found you! I surprised her as much as she surprised me. She's small and tense, but I'm between her and the only exit. There's nowhere for her to go. Who are you? Who are you working for? Move. Her voice is so quiet I can barely hear her, but I don't get a chance to ask her to repeat herself. Get out of the way or I'll kill you. I'm face to face with the girl who stabbed Vic. She's cornered and dangerous. I have to be careful, but I have your knife. Do you have another weapon? It's not that easy to kill a person, and I do know how to defend myself. Maybe I do. You don't sound very confident. The girl deflates as I call her bluff. So what? You a cop? You gonna turn me in? You don't look like a cop. She still has her guard up. She might take off the moment she has the chance. That's because I'm not a cop. I'm an investigator. My job is to get answers, not to throw you in jail. As for turning you into the authorities, I won't do that. Why not? Because I don't know what's going on. I don't have the full picture. 
Why don't you tell me the truth, and then I'll decide. She takes a long time looking at me, considering, calculating. Maybe she's not as impetuous as I thought. If I tell you, can I have your word you'll go easy on me? She's trying to negotiate, even when I have her cornered. I'm not interested in ruining the lives of young people, but you'll have to take my word for it. She hesitates. She nods. Okay. She pulls off the mask over her head. Don't turn me in. She's small, but she's small, about the same age as my sister. Much is still hidden by the hood over her head and her hair and her face, but the shape of her nose and eyes and her chin reveal an undeniable resemblance and the age is right. Oh, Vic was stabbed by her own daughter? It's Maggie, right? What? How? Your mom told me about you. I can see the resemblance. Oh, I, I didn't mean to hurt her. I just panicked. I panicked and I almost killed my mom. It's okay. She's okay, I promise. She's just my sister's age and her tears break my heart just the, the same. I open my arms to offer her a reassuring hug, but Maggie glares at me, sniffs, and wipes the tears on her sleeves. I'm not a kid, I sigh. This case has certainly gone pear-shaped, but I think I understand what happened now. You should come back with me to see your mother, and we can talk it through. Talk through it. Ugh, I think this one beats any punishment I ever got for sneaking out at night. She's gonna kill me. I wish I could reassure you on how she'll respond, but it's hard to say. I don't know if she had any suspicion that you were involved. But the most important thing to any parent is making making sure their kid is safe, and. I think she'll just be happy to see you. Maggie sniffs and rubs her tears on her sleeve again. Thanks. You're okay. I smile at her. The hardest part of my job is done, but the confrontation that Maggie has to face will be difficult for her and for Vic. She's taking on the challenge bravely because she knows it's right, even though it's hard. I'm so proud of her. Thanks. Let's get going. I enter the car I share with Vic, alone at first. She's lying down and resting, but she opens her eyes to look at me when I come in. Our sleuth has returned from the scene of the crime. Did you find anything? You could say that. I found your attacker, but this m may come as a shock to you, so don't get up. I just steer Maggie into the room. Maybe it's just my imagination, but I feel like Maggie is a little bit too close. It's like she's taking shelter behind me. I can't blame her, so I try to be the coolest adult that I can be. M Maggie? Yeah. It's me, Mom. Vic is quiet for a while. I can only imagine the things going through her mind. Stay out of it. Maggie, what are you doing here? What are you doing? I don't understand. I... Maggie looks to me for help. She was so strong in coming here, but facing her mother after her mistakes is still a terrifying thing. Okay, let's go over events step by step. No, wait. There's something I have to know first. Maggie, you're here on a job, aren't you? Yeah. Was it to kill me? No! They're both quiet for a while. Maybe I can shed a light on it. I have the weapon here. It's just a small pocket knife. It's not really meant to cause damage, which tells me Maggie's intentions weren't violent. I think this that this was just something Maggie had in her pocket when she encountered you. If it was a hit, the client would have supplied her for that. That's true. So what we can 
into it from the incident at the drop point is that the stabbing was an accident. So the real assignment for you, Maggie, had to do with the stolen object, and am I right? Maggie nods her head, probably too ashamed of what happened to speak up. Will you tell us about what you were hired to do? <coughs> I, I was supposed to intercept the drop point. I knew that two people were meeting up to exchange something valuable that was hot. Or er, stolen. So, I got it and delivered it to a different connection myself already. Who is your employer? I don't know, some guy. We just talked on the phone. Given the look on Vic's face, I suspect she's catching on. Maggie digs around in her pockets. I thought I had a card. I was supposed to call him. Was it this card? I show the business card that I found on the floor in the hall. Vic stares at it, too. Yeah, this guy. Why would a guy who sells houses care about stealing stuff? Honey, he's a stockbroker. That means he sells, sells shares. Like in Wolf of Wall Street. If the mark is a key to a corporation, their assets or their plans, their value could drop. He could stand to gain a lot of money. Oh, okay. Vic, you must know what this suggests. Vic nods. He played me. Is it really possible that he doesn't know you? In my experience, this kind of stuff is the work of someone with a grudge. No, it, it's possible that he has no idea about either of us, or even that we're related. I bet this was ch all just a ploy so he didn't have to pay me once the job was done. Instead, he could just play Maggie, who is a rookie and a much more affordable hire. We both look at Maggie, who is considering our conversation in silence. I do have a question for you, Mags. Yeah? Maybe this is stupid, but did you know that it was me you were going after? Did you do this to take something out on me? This brings Maggie back into her guilty silence. It must be more complicated than a simple yes or no answer for her to hesitate like that. I don't think she knew. I don't think she knew you were involved. I think when she saw you, she panicked and attacked precisely because it was you and not a stranger. But I'm no mind reader. Mags, is that true? Yeah. Maggie wipes her nose on her sleeve. I didn't mean to hurt you, Mom. I made a mistake. After I ran and I hurt you, I thought, What would I do? What would I do if I killed my mom? Maggie blubbers into the sleeves of her hoodie, her words becoming unintelligible. Vic scoops her daughter into her arms to console her, rubbing Maggie's back and murmuring sweet nothings. With a pang, I miss my sister de desperately. For now, at least, I think things will be okay with these two. I just have to know what inspired you to get involved in my line of work. You know I wanted you to keep your nose clean. I wanted you to go to school and have a good life. I did the, I did the dirty things so I could make your life better than mine. So why are you doing this? Why would you choose it? I don't know, Mom. I don't really know what I want to do. I thought I could go do this job and show you that I could pull it off. Then maybe you to let me be involved in this part of the family business, too. Vic pauses, thoughtful. Well, I'll think about it. You did sure just swindle me out of my paycheck. Hell yes, I did. I think we should go talk to this guy about how you were underpaid for this dangerous job you just pulled off. There was blood involved in everything, even if it wasn't your blood. Do you mean divine retribution? 
that's exactly what I mean. Hmm. I wonder what would happen to his day job if people found out what he's doing on the side. Vic looks at me, almost like she just remembered I was there. I smile back at her. Well, let's not commit to any plan until we get somewhere more private. Train walls have ears, you know. Oh, right. Well, gum shoot, you found, you solved the case and found our crimes. Are you going to turn us in? Well, the stolen item is long gone now, so what would I even bring you in for? I can't even prove anything happened at all unless you want to press charges yourself, Vic. A look of worry crosses Maggie's face for a moment, but Vic laughs it off. You mean this? Just an embarrassing involve, incident involving a vending machine and a stuck package of gum. You're going to have quite the scar to write home about. It's fine. Chicks dig scars. Oh my god. I need to have a tea. You can find me in the dining car when you're done here. Maggie looks like she wants to disappear in a huff, but she stops at the door to look back at me. Thanks. And then she's gone. She's a good kid. Yeah. I did the best I could. I always believed that. Vic heaves a sigh and scratches at the back of her neck. I always tried to keep her away from the illegal stuff, but there's only so much you can shelter a kid from. Eventually, she catches on after Uncle Jay goes to prison for a few years and after she watches you st stitch up gashes in the bathroom. When a kid sees all that and sees the high offer high after a job well done I guess it can look something like some like something romantic and cool I mean not that it isn't those things maybe I could have been more honest to give her the whole picture so she could see what kind of danger she'd be in I just didn't want her to see what kind of risks I took for this line of work I didn't want her to be scared that I might not come home I wanted to be scared to be scared about that enough for the both of us. I didn't want her to worry about anything. If I could keep everything going with just money from the shop, I would have done it. I just couldn't. Vic meets my eyes. What about you? Do you respect me less? Do you think I'm rash? Do you think I'm irresponsible? I think you did the best you could. I think you're doing the best you can even now. Vic smiles at me. It has a little something extra in it that it didn't before, although it's hard to tell what it is. Thanks. Seriously, thank you for everything. Have you ever thought about crossing the floor, getting up to some trouble with a renegade on a motorcycle? I can't say I've entertained that particular fantasy, but it does sound pretty tempting. Vic takes her time to stand up, one arm on the wound on her stomach. Hey, how are you feeling? Vic shushes me as she climbs to her feet. She rocks across the cabin and leans against the wall next to me. She leans in just a bit too close, sending my heart hammering into my in my chest. I can hear her breath quickening. This is usually very sexy, I swear. But under, but under these circumstances, stances, it's just excruciatingly painful. Hmm, I think I'm beginning to see through your charms, Miss Rook. I'll have to make up on my lost reputation later. Although I could use a new partner in crime, in which case maybe it could be sooner. In spite of her words, Vic leans shadow a cast over me against the wall. She smells lightly of tobacco in the countryside. I let myself lean into her, carrying my own weight, but resting my body against hers. I wish I could, but I'm on vacation. If I pick up a new job while I'm away, my sister will kill me. Vic laughs. Fair enough. But here, just in case. Vic shows me a business card of her own for her motorcycle shop, and it tucks and tucks it into my pocket, jacket pocket. You can call me if you ever decide to go for a career change, or if you want to get a drink. 
I can feel the heat of a blush on my face, and I was looking so cool until now. Yeah, that sounds great. When Vic leans in closer, I meet her halfway. With any luck, the rest of my vacation will be just as rewarding. <coughs> I didn't think I'd like this route. And I was right. But, you know, that's okay. Not, not, not everybody can be winners. So that is it for Love on the Peacock Express. Stay tuned for more stuff. I have some exciting things coming. Got a few more visual not novel dating sims. Have you ever noticed that dating sims are always visual novels? It's never anything else. Um, and we have more Night in the Woods to do. I'm excited for that. But I will see you in the next episode. Stay lucky.